the software defined networking and open flow webinar was made possible by the sponsorship of big switch networks big switch networks are developing an sdn application for network virtualization and you can get their open source sdn controller called floodlight at the openflowhub.org you can find big switch at bigswitch.com this webinar is just one of many vendor independent data center and virtualization webinars available on IP Space. To learn more about them, visit ipspace.net. And don't forget that you get immediate access to all of them with a yearly subscription. So, let me walk you through the controller ecosystem. So to start with how we look at it today, and this is, this is leading up to a big slide which hopefully helps to describe the location of the controller and the, and the app within the whole thing and addresses some of the questions that you'll have around vendors. So please pay attention. So the ecosystem today talks about the user presentation layer being a CLI. So today we twitch our fingers on a keyboard and make little magic things happen, provided we're concentrating very, very hard. And we use a management protocol, SNSH and Telnet. And that's the way it all started, right? And our physical network had a number of devices in it. The second stage of our ecosystem saw the development of SNMP. So we still had the CLI and people twitching around at the, key, at the keyboard, but our user presentation layer got a little bit more sophisticated when we had SNMP to help us do things like configuration management, asset management, performance monitoring, and to give you some <laughs> limited automation capability. It's hard to say SNMP does things properly, but it, cause it doesn't. And this is where we are at today. Tomorrow, we will start to have these open flow controllers uh, and I, uh, that actually abstract this into a far more complicated environment. So I'm going to go through this in, person, in, in a bit more detail. Down the side here, we have the CLI talking over SSH protocols and then into the device. So that will always be around. You will always need that to see what the device is happening. If you change the management protocols to be SNMP, you can see here that the SNMP here through the middle using existing network management systems presents a configuration asset management and a user interface to you. So those people who use network management tools today that are SNMP driven, you'd know exactly what you've got there, right? But if I add OpenFlow as a management protocol, which is a, a sort of, I'm overloading it, what its capabilities are, but it's a, it's a valid uh, presumption, is that you will have two types of controllers in the network. And one will be an open source controller that anybody can use that's well known and readily available. And I believe in the long term that vendors will make their own controllers. And the vendor controllers and the open controllers will probably speak OpenFlow down to the networking devices to configure them, right? And they'll also talk to SNMP because you need to have status information that might be available from SNMP. So that which is not available via OpenFlow, you may also still use SNMP. That's less clear to me at this time, but you'll have an open controllers and you'll have vendor-based controllers, I believe, in the longer term. Who will the vendors be? At this point, we, we, we don't know. And then above that, in the application layer, you will now start to have applications. So in this case, I've just picked out four reasonably proven, or hopefully proven in the first half, that there are switching apps, layer two, apps that do load balancing, apps that do firewalling, and apps that do routing. Now, whether those apps are you know, virtual configuration apps, or whether they're flow scale, or whether they're, you know, However they look, those apps are the things that are then going to be presented up to the present presentation layer. So today's network management systems will need to have more capabilities to drive the apps. I think in the short term, those apps will probably present user interfaces directly to the user as they grow and mature and become, you know, get developed. And but in the longer term, those apps will then be driven by some presentation layer that we would use. So the final part of this puzzle is that there are other standards that may or may not um, play here. Once you create a networking management ecosystem where applications can start to intelligently analyze data and stuff like that, then you might be able to find out that um, there are other ways to program in network devices. So for example, today you have protocols called NetConf and Yang, which are self-describing XML data interfaces, APIs that run over SSH, SSL, or various systems that actually program devices. 
that netconf yank has actually been around for like five to eight years that I that I can see it's reasonably well known and has a capability to configure devices once we've established that a controller and an application ecosystem can be developed openflow as a protocol between the controller and the device might actually be replaced or run in parallel with other protocols such as vendor proprietary XML APIs. Uh, so for example, Junos already has their Slacks API, Brocade has just announced their open script, Force 10 slash Dell has their own uh, open shell environment. I could be getting the exact words wrong. Uh, but you know, there's no reason why vendors couldn't release their own controllers that talk to their own APIs. Uh, sorry there. Uh, talking to their own APIs, but also supporting open APIs. And I imagine that the vendors would pretend that their XML APIs are superior and and come with new and enhanced electronics inside them that make them, you know, that make their capabilities more something than other people. And, you know, the it's a little hard to know how this will play, but if I had to bet on it, I would say that the major vendors have their own controllers in the mix that allow for a superset of proprietary XML APIs in the same way that um, many networking standards today, many vendors have their own proprietary standards. They also support the open standards, but the proprietary standards su supply some enhanced capability or superset or extended functionality. The question is whether we as customers would buy those proprietary extensions. Would we perceive value in them and be willing to pay for them? It's Hard to know at this point in time, but it is worth pointing out that OpenFlow is a way of updating the flow database and therefore updating the configuration of the network. But there are other standards specifically targeting updating the configuration of devices where NetConf could actually configure interfaces and routing tables far more effectively using the models that we already do to the way that we know. And of course, the vendors are already having have developed significant XML APIs or shell environments, which allow for a lot more configuration that we've never had before. So the path to OpenFlow is not a four lane highway of joy and freedom with a six pack and a girl in the, in the seat next to you. It's a little bit more complex and it's a little hard to say how it'll work out. I'd be backing OpenFlow though, would be my view. So to finally wrap out the whole of the entirety of that stack is that above the presentation, the user presentation layer, we will probably end up with Cloudy DevOps, OpenStack, VMware vCenter, Microsoft Scum VM, and custom automation tools there at the top. So look at the user automation layer right at the top here, where you will see things like OpenStack driving into a API layer, which drives the application configuration, which drives the controllers to communicate over protocols down to the networking devices. People, I give you the future of networking as I see it. I don't see why this isn't the future at this particular point in time, because things like OpenStack and VMware are centralized controllers that own the configuration. Today, VMware is inventing protocols like VXLAN and Microsoft is inventing NVGRE so that their, their controllers, server controllers, you know, virtualization controllers, which is effectively what they are, although they are mostly configuration controllers, are actually there to, uh, you know, they need NVGRE and VXLAN to solve the fact that networking doesn't have an API today. And this is what we're abstracting towards in the longer term. To get more information about IPSpace webinars, please visit ipspace.net.